The following program contains politically irreverent commentary. If you suffer from an exaggerated sense of self-importance, this show might not be right for you. Check with a PhD in PC ASAP. For truth in the four corners of America. Fighting for justice on the frontiers of the culture wars. And turning resistance into an art form. Randall Terry. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Lindsey Graham, Senator from South Carolina, he's done had a conversion. And Joe Biden, he's evangelizing. Even as we speak, yes, he's recruiting people come to the altar. He's in Mexico, or just got back, recruiting more illegal immigrants to come. This and so much more, including a, a fairly troubling look at some of the sword verses from the Quran. Gosh, I love that peaceful religion. It's time now for Down Home with Granny Jihad. Allah the Grappa! Boys and girls, listen. Muhammad was asked, what is the best deed? He replied, to believe in Allah and his apostle Muhammad. The questioner then asked, what is the next best in goodness? He replied, to participate in jihad, religious fighting in Allah's cause. Welcome to the program, friend. Our illustrious vice president, the court jester, Joe Biden, was recently in Mexico recruiting more illegal immigrants to cross the border with the promise of getting them out of the shadows and into the American tax base. I mean, he didn't use those words exactly, but ultimately that is what will happen. What he said was, <clears throat> and I quote, with regard to immigration, let me make two things absolutely clear. It is not only from the perspective of, perspective of the president, myself, and the American people, a matter of justice, respect, and according dignity to all people, to bring 11 million undocumented men, women, and children out of the shadows. But it's also overwhelmingly in the self-interest, the economic self-interest of the United States. What does he mean by that? <clears throat> well, he's talking about a tax base. He's talking about people that are working here illegally and they're paying sales tax when they buy something, all right? I mean, it's not, it's not like they're living here for absolutely free, but they're, he's saying, let's bring them in, get them out of the shadows, so they're not illegal immigrants, they're here legally, and then ultimately we'll get them on the path to citizenship, and then they can be paying some of their tax money into the federal coffers. Now, let me point out to you the obvious. Most of the illegal immigrants who are working in America right now, okay, they're making less money than they would be required to make to pay federal income tax. Are you hearing what I just said? They don't make enough money to pay federal income tax. So this was a scam. What this was really all about was exploding the base of the Democratic party. 
little footnote on history that you might not know. Most African Americans up until the late 1950s belonged to, ready, the Republican Party. The Democratic Party was far more hostile to African Americans, to black Americans. And what happened was JFK made some kind comments about the civil rights workers. And then RFK, when he became the Attorney General, started to really work, justly so, to break the back of segregation. And overnight, a massive base was created for the Democratic Party. Lyndon Baines Johnson, then Vice President under Kennedy, who became President with President Kennedy's assassination, God rest his soul, Johnson, like Biden today, said, we've got to expand this base. And so Johnson proceeded to create the welfare state. And the welfare state was targeted primarily at poor African Americans to put them on the government dole to overnight create a massive influx of voters to the base of the Democratic Party. Friends, that's what this is all about with Biden. That's what this is all about. And the Republicans are now terrified that this is happening. And so you see various Republican senators trying to scramble and say, well, we could do this, we could do that. We, yeah, we too, we want to get these people out of the shadows. We want to help them in the process. Because if it is Obama and Biden who succeed in getting these illegals legal and getting them the path to citizenship, then it's the Democratic Party that is going to get the credit and the votes. And Biden said something that was quite profound. He said that what Obama and he were trying to do would, quote, literally, uh, literally going to shape the future of my country for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. The court jester is absolutely right. If they are successful, it will reshape this country and it will entrench the Democrats in, party, or in power and will entrench the welfare state. And the rest of us, well, we're just the happy slave labor force on Obama and Biden's plantation. Smile. Every day in America, over 3,500 babies are torn apart by abortion. Shouldn't all babies like this living unborn child have the right to life? Baby killing will only end when Americans see the truth of what abortion does to innocent children. You can help end this Holocaust by showing the truth of abortion in your area with a Face the Truth tour. Go to facethetruthamerica.com to set up a Face the Truth tour in your area. The babies and their mothers will be eternally grateful. How would you like to be able to reach hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of potential customers with your product or your company or your web-based business? Well, you can do that right here on this show. Every single day, we get phone calls or letters or orders online from states all over the country where people are watching this television show. Right now, we are seen in 45 cities at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time every night and then a rerun again at 12.30 midnight. You can reach them using this show at advertising rates that are so inexpensive, it would blow your mind. So, if you're interested, contact us at the phone number that you see on the screen or the email address, and we can talk about how you can grow your business and help support this show. Welcome back to the program, friend. The recent murderous attacks in Pakistan and in Kenya launched by devout Muslims against innocent Christians, has again brought Islam into sharp focus. I'm going to read to you from the Quran some of what are euphemistically known as the sword verses, just a few of them, just to give you a taste. And before I read them, I want to point out two things. Number one, there are a lot of sword verses in the Quran, and there are a lot more, by a factor of 10 or 20, sword sayings of Muhammad in the Hadith, 
Remember, the Quran is for them the word of God, and the Hadith are the words of Muhammad, which dwarf the size of the Quran. But it's from the words of Muhammad and the example that he left that Muslims base their faith and base Sharia law. All right? I'm going to read to you some of these. But the other thing that I want to point out is, is critical. One of the reasons that Hitlerism was stopped was because Winston Churchill read Mein Kampf. One of the reasons that communism was viewed as the threat that it truly was and remains to human rights in certain countries was because people read the Communist Manifesto. They read it and they realized, oh my goodness, if these people succeed in what they're laying out in broad daylight, if they succeed in it, then liberty and life, self, or the ownership of property, self-government, ability to elect your government, the ability to criticize your government, all of this gets swept away. And freedom as we know it will die. The same with Mein Kampf. The problem we're facing today is that we don't have men and women, at least not in most branches of our government or areas of our government, and certainly not in most areas of the media, we don't have people that have the intellectual integrity and courage to simply read the Quran and read the Hadith and look at the life of Muhammad and to let it speak for itself. Churchill said, let Mein Kampf speak for itself. The people who fought against communism said, let the Communist Manifesto speak for itself. And when people did read, they were rightly alarmed, especially when they saw the fruit of it in broad daylight. Well, the words of the Quran and the Hadith are really clear. And so is the fruit. Most people still have their head in the sand. Remember the expression, none are as blind as the willfully blind. Well, to help open the eyes of a few misguided souls, let me read to you just a few of the passages from the sword verses. This comes from chapter 2 or Surah 2. Fight in the cause of Allah, those who fight you, but do not transgress the limits, for Allah loveth not transgressors. And slay them wherever you catch them, and turn them out from where they have turned you out. For tumult and oppression are worse than slaughter. In other words, people who speak against Islam, they cause tumult. That's really bad. It's even worse than slaughter, open war. But fight them not at the sacred mosque unless they first fight you there. But if they fight you, slay them. Such is the reward of those who suppress faith. But if they cease, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. And fight them until there is no more tumult or oppression, and there prevail justice and faith in Allah. But if they cease, let there be no hostility except to those who practice oppression. So fight them until they stop with their tumult. And if they'll stop, all right, and there prevails justice and faith in Allah, the Muslim faith, then all is good. We've won. <clears throat> Here's one from chapter 9. And when the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists. And by the way, Christians are called polytheists in the Islamic faith because they think we believe in many gods. All right, the Trinity to them is polytheism. So we're polytheists, okay? And when the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and sit and wait for them at every place of ambush. But if they should repent, establish prayer and give zakah, the tax, then let them go their way. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. How about, uh, I know we're a little over on time. Let me do a couple quick more, okay? Fight those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful and who do not adopt the religion of truth from those who were given the scripture. Fight until they give the Jizra willingly while they are humbled. Verse 123, O you who have believed, fight those adjacent to you of the disbelievers and let them find in you harshness and know that with Allah, and know that Allah is with the righteous. Friend, this is their narrative. Their holy book says, God, Allah wants us to, or rather to kill, to slay, to crucify the unbelievers until none is worshiped but Allah. That is evangelism, Mohammedan style. Do you want to have knowledge, wisdom, discernment, 
If so, you have to read good books on theology, history, books that look at the lives of great men and women. So to help you to become a more effective Christian, a better witness for truth, somebody who can engage in productive conversation that exhorts and edifies those that you speak with, we're going to do something crazy. We're offering you these seven books for a gift of any size. You just pay for the shipping and handling and then give whatever gift that you can and we will send them to you. But just to make it a little bit more crazy, I will send you a second copy of my three books autographed. You can give them as a gift to your pastor or to a family member and help extend truth and justice in the world. This is While Supplies Last. That's me singing one of the calls to prayer that I heard when I was over in the Middle East. Man, that one was my favorite. All right. The Muslim Brotherhood, in the news again. By the way, the Muslim Brotherhood, in case you did not know, is the largest Muslim organization, non-governmental Muslim organization in the world. Okay? Over 70 nations they're in, including here in the United States of America. Millions of members. And scholars agree that the fount of modern Islamic terrorism, the very source, right from the Muslim Brotherhood, okay? And they've been illegal in Egypt, where they were founded by Hassan al-Banna in 1928. They've been illegal for most of their history. At first, people tolerated them, and then when the Egyptian government at that time saw that they were connected to assassinations and that they wanted to overthrow the government, well, then we thought, whoa, 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 whoa. The, the Egyptian government thought, these guys are a threat. But they were genius in the way they set up the organization. And though many governments throughout the world have been trying to stamp them out for decades, they continued to grow and they were involved in the overthrow of Mubarak. They were over involved in the overthrow of Gaddafi. They're on the ground fighting in Syria to take down Assad. This is not a group to be quibbled with. Understand that. And they have a very significant root structure right here in America. Well, the, a court in Egypt, the Cairo Court of Urgent Matters, has ordered that all of their assets be seized and has said that the group is now illegal, completely 100% illegal, again, in Egypt. When will the U.S. government study history? When will people in the State Department, when will people under Obama's watch just, they don't even have to read the tea leaves, okay? All they have to do is read the writings in plain English, right? They've translated them into English. All they have to do is read the writings and see for themselves that the Muslim Brotherhood is in fact, by US definitions, a terrorist organization. Now, now remember, a terrorist organization is defined by attacking non-combatants, trying to change public policy with acts of terror, connected to assassinations, etc. Acts of war, fighting military outposts. I, I mean, I hate, I hate to say this, but there are people who want to pretend that they're not terrorists, and the reasoning, the logic that they use is that they want self-determination, all right? Self-determination. The Muslim Brotherhood is completely content to work outside the system and launch acts of terror, or to come into the system and work through the ballot box. But their goal is always going to be the same. They want Sharia law to be the foundation of the government. They want to suppress Christianity. They want to create one Ummah, one people, one Islamic people, and they want to spread jihad. That's what they want, plain and simple. So whether they do it through acts of terror or through the ballot box, they've been very successful thus far. Here's the problem with the U.S. government, the current government. They have enshrined as the ultimate idol self-determination. Elections. Self-determination is not a moral principle. It's just not. If you have an election and 90% of the people vote to take away the property of 10% and kill those 10% and we voted fair and square, it's immoral. It's tyranny. 
It's the French Revolution. So we have to look at the content, the moral, ethical, political content of a system and say, even if this system comes to power through the ballot box, like Hitler did in Germany, okay, it's still fundamentally evil and must be crushed. Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the Republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Senator Lindsey Graham from South Carolina. He done saw the light after he felt the heat. Lindsey Graham, in case you don't know, is what we call a squish. He tragically took the seat of Strom Thurmond, and Lindsey Graham has been a cave-in over and over. He has done Obama's bidding more times than I can even think. He's been a disgrace to the Republican Party, a disgrace to Christian moral absolutes. Well, I don't know if it was a year or two ago when people in the House were talking about defunding Obamacare, just defunding it. Lindsey Graham said, that's a bridge too far for me. That's an allusion back to World War II, by the way. Well, he's facing primary opponents. Yeah, he's facing Tea Party primary opponents. And they are saying, I want to defund Obamacare. And guess what Lindsey Graham is saying? Yeah, a couple of days ago he tweeted, he tweeted, it's a powerhouse, that way he doesn't have to answer questions, or face criticism, but he tweeted that he too wants to defund Obamacare. Well, I'm glad that he's a late convert, but the list of his treachery is so long, including helping to confirm, helping to confirm Elena Kagan to the Supreme Court and Sonia Sotomayor to the Supreme Court, paving the way for them, refusing to participate in any filibuster or any mechanism whatsoever to keep them off the Supreme Court. He has caved in to Obama's agenda over and over and over again. And I know we've got a lot of viewers in South Carolina. All I can tell you is this, you would do a great service to freedom, to the pro-life movement, to the defense of marriage, to the end of Obamacare. You would do a great service to the country to get behind one of his primary opponents and help defeat him. Now, there is a little bit of trouble in River City over Lindsey Graham, uh, and that is that there are four people in the primary thus far, him and three others. However, in South Carolina, you have to have 50% plus one to win a primary. So, in a four-way race, if Lindsey Graham gets less than 50% of the primary vote, the second place winner and he will have a runoff. All I can hope is that he goes into the retirement he has so richly deserved. Now, I, like many of you, have spent most of my adult life in the Republican Party. One of the problems that we have is what President Reagan, who I love, he's one of my heroes, even heroes make mistakes, is where President Reagan said the 11th commandment, there's only 10, the 11th commandment is you shall not speak ill of your fellow Republicans. Now President Reagan did that probably for somewhat selfish motives because he had a lot of Republicans speaking against him. So he said, let's just all get along. We're in the same party, we're in the same family. The problem is, if you've got a crazy uncle in the basement, you don't give him the keys to the car. You don't say, my uncle's not crazy. You admit it. You say, yeah, our family has problems. And if you have to identify a problem in the family, you do it. 
In other words, you put principle first, put justice first, put liberty first. And when you have a crazy uncle in the basement like Lindsey Graham, it's time to put him in the asylum, all right? Get him out of office.